Illumination is the new Disney. It's a pretty inflammatory statement, isn't it? Like, conjures up all manner of thoughts. But I guarantee it's mostly getting a lot of scoffs right now. Like, yeah, it is a bit of a ridiculous statement on the face of things. You have Disney, of which I'm going to lump in Walt Disney Animated Studios, and Pixar too. They've won multiple Oscars, they've made billions of dollars, they have prestige and acclaim, and everybody around the world knows the mouse. Whilst Illumination, it has the reputation of being the studio that makes the movies that have the minions in them. Fun for the kiddies, I guess, but not much else. Like, I'm not trying to take a crap on them or anything, but I do think this is the overarching perception. That Illumination's more commonly serving and catering to the lowest common denominator, whilst Disney's a bit more of a general audience. And then Pixar, it has a bit more of a prestige attached to it. Not saying what's right or wrong here, but I do think that's the status quo, or it was. And I'm not necessarily arguing that Illumination has leapfrogged them in quality or prestige, or critical acclaim, or recognition really, but rather, it seems like they've leapfrogged them in terms of their overall success, financially. And that's rather significant. And it certainly has been a bit of a surprise to me. And yeah, I guess we'll have to take a little bit of a stroll back down memory lane to sort of see what I truly mean. And we'll start with Pixar. So Pixar, from its early days in the mid-90s, and pretty much for the next 25 years, were the golden studio. They'd release films that did it all. They made good money at the box office, they'd do well with critics, and many of their films were pushing into the high hundred millions of dollars. And then from 2013 especially, they were well and truly on a hot streak. They were on fire. Monsters University grossed $740 million. In 2015, Inside Out grossed $850 million. In 2016, Finding Dory did over a billion dollars. The next year, Coco got to $814 million. Then Incredibles 2 grossed $1.2 billion in 2018, and Toy Story 4 brought in a billion dollars the next year. They were well and truly flying high. Until they weren't, because that was up to 2019. And what came the next year? Well, the start of COVID-19. The pandemic that shattered the long-established status quo of the film industry, or at least in terms of the animated studios. Pixar's still trying to recover. Onward came out the next year, and its run was largely destroyed by the onset of the lockdowns and whatnot. And suddenly, most of Pixar's releases were straight to Disney Plus in order to, one, capitalize on all the people that had stayed home, and two, ensure they could recoup some of their potential lost revenue. And so Soul and Luca, which were well received by critics, they fell victim to this. And Turning Red, which was a little bit less well received by audiences, suffered the same fate. And so this brought us to Lightyear, their first cinematic release in years. A film that it felt like Pixar had very high hopes for. It was a spin-off film for Toy Story. And whilst it was clear that it was never going to hit those lofty heights, there was still a good chance it was going to do very well for itself. Till it released, and it became a box office bomb. It barely recouped its budget, and it lost the studio an estimated $100 million. And that's an unprecedented financial failure for Pixar. And people tried to rationalise it and talk about all the factors that went into it. They talked about how it probably isn't possible at this time for an animated movie to really just blow up at the box office. Until, whoopsie, Minions 2 blew up only like two weeks later. Ouch. And yeah, next up we had Elemental, which is a film that I really enjoyed. But that at first, it was also a flop. But over time, the film slowly but surely was able to turn things around, to end up with a respectable gross of $496.4 million. But remember those pre-COVID numbers I was talking about? This doesn't even come close to that. Doesn't even come close to the heyday of the studio. And you can also observe this trend with Walt Disney Animated Studios too. The 2010s was a hot run for the House of Mouse. Frozen 1 grossed $1.2 billion. Big Hero 6 grossed over $600 million. Zootopia got to a billion dollars. Moana almost got to $700 million. Frozen 2, $1.4 billion. Those are massive numbers. Pulling in all the revenue, just on fire. And then of course COVID hit. And Disney doesn't actually release anything in that first year. Poor old Pixar was the sacrificial lamb for that. And I do think that played into why their audience has declined significantly, but we'll get into that in a bit. But yeah, Raya and the Last Dragon came out, and it did well for itself on Disney+. Plus but I think they would have preferred a big fat box office. We then came to Encanto, which was wildly popular, and yet not so much at the box office. It was when it came to Disney Plus on streaming that it really took off internationally. Then we come to Strange World in 2022, and Wish in 2023. Back-to-back -back box office bombs, like oof. Those ones had to hurt, especially Wish, because that was their anniversary film, their 100th anniversary film, and it was completely bungled. Dang. But then on the flip side of all of that, all of that stunted potential, missed opportunity, and diminished returns, you have Illumination, who for the most part, are doing very, very well. They kind of just skipped the COVID box office collapse. Their last film, Secret Life of Pets 2, it released in 2019. And then they didn't put out the Sing sequel until the end of 2021. And here was the first shock, because whilst Encanto at the same time struggled at the COVID box office, 
Sing 2 actually did good numbers, grossed $408 million off $85 million. And yeah, that's not their most successful film ever, not by far. But at the same time, it defeated a Disney musical at the box office, releasing only like a month apart. That's a pretty good performance if you ask me. And their success only continued to grow, because whilst Lightyear was busy stinking up the box office, Minions Rise of Gru released, and almost pushed to a billion. Didn't quite make it there, but almost. And then the next year, 2023, they were the animation studio that managed to break that billion dollar mark that had become commonplace during the 2010s. The first billion dollar animated gross of the 2020s went to Illumination with the wildly successful Super Mario Bros. movie. And yeah, that thing well and truly exploded. It managed to gross $1.36 billion at the box office, whilst also breaking a bunch of records along the way. And now it's the third most successful animated film ever after the Lion King remake and Frozen 2. They then followed this up with Migration, which has not had the best box office impact compared to the other films we've mentioned, but it hasn't finished its run yet. And yet despite that, it has still gone better than a lot of the other Disney Pixar releases. But yeah, it might make a modest profit, but not much more than that. And so yeah, it's actually quite crazy to me that for the last couple of years, Illumination has become the true box office draw, the true power in animation. Above Disney, above Pixar, above DreamWorks. Well, obviously. <laughs> they may not always get rave reviews, but ultimately, despite it being common knowledge that their films are perhaps not exactly top tier in terms of quality, or perceived quality at least, they've been kicking the big name asses for like two years at this point, which... That's pretty unexpected, and it's also rather unprecedented, but I guess when you really break it down, it makes a lot of sense, because well, look at the stuff they've released. They skipped over COVID, and right away they were releasing sequels and prequels to things. Sing was a known franchise, something people could trust to get their kids some enjoyment. And on top of that, Illumination had managed to skip the straight-to-streaming era, which I think kept it having a bit of an aura. An aura of, oh, if you want to see this film, you have to see it in the cinema. But meanwhile, Pixar had been pumping out originals straight to streaming for years by this point, which I think kind of tanked their must-see reputation, because it made it clear that you could easily just wait to see it come out on Disney Plus after all. So why bother going to see it? And I think that played a huge role in the downfall of Lightyear. Because let's be honest, whilst I didn't enjoy it, that movie should not have done nearly as bad as it did. And yet it defied all expectations, and it did just that. It failed. It really just, yeah, it had it all, and it squandered it away. Same thing happened to Elemental. It was released as new IP in an era where people are far pickier about what to spend their money on, as going to the cinema is so much more expensive these days. And the only reason it recovered was through word of mouth giving it long-term staying power at the box office, and it had some strength in international markets like South Korea. But even then, it was lower than most other successful Pixar films. And then meanwhile, Walt Disney, they've had no luck at all. Encanto suffered from being a new IP as well, I think, and thus it underperformed at the box office. I mean, for God's sake, it lost to Sing too, And Sing is like... Their third biggest franchise, maybe? Then Strange World and Wish were just both flops, embarrassing flops. And in my eyes, both just not great movies as well. But I think it has been a similar concept to Pixar. You take your kids to the cinema for a family film, but that's expensive now. So you're most likely going to choose the known quantity, the sequel, the name brand, the franchise, as opposed to the unknown. And so Illumination, because they're focusing on franchises right now, has come out on top. And I think it's likely going to stay on top at least this year, because they now have Despicable Me 4 releasing. And that's going to be on track for another billion dollar gross, I'd expect. Whilst Pixar and Disney, they have Inside Out 2 and Moana 2. And both of those original films back in the day, they did very well. But at the same time, you know, not Despicable Me well. Although you never know, they might surprise you. You never know. Regardless, I think Disney and Pixar, they are going to regain some momentum going forward in the next couple of years. Pixar has a new Toy Story in the pipeline. And yeah, Disney has two Frozen films and a Zootopia sequel on the horizon. So there's a good chance they take back the top spot unless Illumination really doubles down and makes more minions and stuff. But regardless, I just find it very funny that the Goofy Minion Studio is the current box office powerhouse of the animated industry. They've got so much hate from so many different places. But here they are, right on top of the mountain. Hell yeah, love me some minions. And so yeah, not really much else to say. And so... I'll just remind you these have been my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think about all this? Do you think Disney and Pixar are going to reclaim their top spot, or do you reckon we're in the Illumination era? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.